Hey, I'm Mike Lemon with Cyber Safe Team Nation. Today we have a very special guest, Dustin Daly from RPAC, who's going to be talking about what RPAC can do and really the, the strong features it has in controlling apps on an individual uh, level. So, Dustin, we appreciate you coming by today. Thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Can you give our audience a little kind of background on for you and how you kind of had a passion to do what you're doing and then how RPAC is really helping parents? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, my background has been in technology, developing products for a long time. Uh, before coming here to work on RPAC, uh, I was actually working in education, developing software for education. Um, and I was looking for a new role and uh, met with Amir Masavian, who's the founder of RPAC. And he had an incredible story, incredible idea. And uh, I was sold and very passionate about helping out um, and driving that vision. Um, I can share a little bit about how that started. Um, sure. You know. A, Amir has been in technology for a long time himself, um, but he was really seeing, uh, you know, the impact that devices were having in his own family um, and the impact it had on family time. Um, as we all know, that happens to the best oh, yeah. of us, um, even with uh, kids or, you know, loved ones. Um, and so he had an idea of creating a, a pack, a, a document between him and his children that really kind of outlined that device use as a privilege and kind of set some boundaries for uh, not having the phones out at the dinner table um, and also not, you know, before hour before bed. Uh, that really helps uh, with kids going to bed and getting a good night's rest. Um, but that only worked to some extent. Um, you know, he would give them 15 minute warning and come back and an hour later, they would still be on, on the phone. And uh, he realized that technology sometimes is the, the problem, but there's also a lot of great things about technology and that it could be yeah. the, the solution. Um, and so that's really how our pack started. And we, I joined the team and uh, we started working on the idea and developing our pack. Um, and so one of the goals was really trying to give parents the tools that they needed uh, to help raise their children and the way that they saw fit, um, give them different sets of features um, that really helped uh, the Kind of help teach the kids uh, how to be good digital citizens, um, how to you know navigate phone use and device at all different uh, ages. So um, you know we really started out with uh, trying to limit certain apps because um, one of the the issues we saw early on too is just um, young kids. There was nothing built in or no mechanism built into the devices, um, and parents were giving very young kids devices that just gave them access to all sorts of applications that maybe weren't appropriate for that age. Um, so that's really where, where we started is trying to prevent um, the use of particular apps. Um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So, well, you know, obviously technology has changed uh, through the years mm -hmm. and the, the threats and the things that kids are facing are, has changed. Uh, what kind of change have you all seen and kind of how have you kept up with those, those different threats? Yeah, we definitely have seen a lot of changes. Um, I mean, everything from cyber bullying, um, predators. Um, so you get it from not only are they having to worry about uh, their peers, um, who are sometimes supposed to be their friends, but also may, um, you know, kind of bully them or provide peer pressure online, um, but also bad actors out there. Um, and then just the the constant uh, uh, being barraged or being barraged by uh, just uh, Facebook postings, Instagram, I mean, all the other apps that are out there um, and just being uh, really addicted to the device. So obviously we have the app rules feature that you know allows parents to kind of block some inappropriate apps. Um, and then we started bringing out features as far as setting time limits on the device on actual allowance. And parents can really fine tune that if they wanna have some apps be set as an exception. But ultimately, if they think you know it's appropriate for the kid to only be on their device for a maximum of four hours, they can set that limit. And after that, they, they can't use uh, most of the device with the exceptions that the, the parent sets. Um, and we also saw too with, uh, you know, kids get older, um, you know, being out and about more often and parents not knowing where they are. And so, you know, kind of started tapping into geolocation features. So there's a lot in that area. Um, but most recently there, the, our newest feature view is really we saw a problem with um, the content, right? So, you know, Facebook isn't necessarily altogether bad. YouTube isn't either. 
there's good content and there's maybe not so great content or content that's mm -hmm. not appropriate for your child depending on their age. Um, and it's really hard to, um, you know, we're not looking to, um, yeah, control that content, um, but we want to give parents an insight to that. So the view feature, um, you know, it's something that the kids are aware of. They have to activate it on, on their end, but it gives parents access to get periodic screenshots of the content that's occurring on the device. Um, and there's analysis that's occurring there to kind of flag for maybe inappropriate stuff or stuff that's alarming, um, whether it's just inappropriate content or concerning things um, in regards to like suicide, uh, suicide mm -hmm. ideation. Um, so we've actually had families reached out saying that they've been able to get their kids help as a result of that feature. Oh, that's um, awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's, it's uh, definitely makes it all worthwhile. Um, it's very rewarding to hear those stories and we're just happy we're able to be a, a part of that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's excellent. Excellent work. So let me ask you this. Where, what is your superpower? Who is the kind of the, the parent who you can say we can help you at the highest level? Hmm. Yeah, I think our, our superpower is really being able to help uh, all parents in the way that they need to be helped or the family needs to be helped. Um, so, right, if you've got multiple kids, even if they're identical twins and are the same age, they're, they're different people and you might need to, you know, set the same sort of rules for each of them, um, but kind of implement those differently. And the app really allows you to, to do that, um, to kind of fine tune it for each child. Um, based on their age or their, their particular personality. Um, and so we really see over time too, families that have been on the product for a really long time, they'll use a certain feature sets, whether that's, you know, really blocking a lot of, of apps and really uh, locking that down to, you know, maybe a few apps such as, you know, YouTube Kids, for example, um, and blocking access to um, all internet browsers and turning on adult content filters. Um, and as uh, kids get older, you know, maybe increasing the allowance time limits, um, but using geolocation features uh, more heavily. So it's a product that we've really tried to add a, a rich feature set and develop in such a way that can grow with the family and the kids over time. Excellent. Interesting. You said twins. I know we didn't talk about this beforehand, but I've had two sets of twins. Oh, you so, do? Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so when you said that, I started chuckling. I was like, yeah, uh -huh. you're right. You're exactly right. They're, they are nothing alike, uh, even though yeah. they're, you know, born at the same time, nothing alike. And so it's, mm -hmm. it's, that's pretty funny. So let me, so this is not, it's, it's available through iOS, through Apple and through Android. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it just phones or is this uh, multiple platform as far as tablets as well? Yeah, it works on all tablets, um, all mobile devices. So iOS and Android mobile devices um, is primarily what we're, we're uh, the platform that we're on. Um, we do have a web app for parents to be able to manage um the product if they're at work and just want to hop online at the office they're able to do that um we don't currently support it's something that um we're looking into and have worked on the some rd on but supporting you know laptops you know potentially chromebooks at some mm -hmm. point um but really it's focusing on the mobile devices that are in the back pockets of kids or you know in their uh, beds with them yeah now we, i get a lot of questions from parents who are, are dealing with apps and they have one has a phone or an Android one has an a iPhone is is that can, is mm. an issue as far as cross monitoring the, using different devices no it's not a problem at all um so iOS and Android devices whether the the kids have mixed set of devices you know a uh, Android phone iOS tablet um or the parents on iOS and Android it, it doesn't matter um the same set of features work across both we see you know a lot of competitors that maybe have a richer feature set on Android um, and all of our feature set has parity between both iOS and Android devices. Um, we've really worked hard to do that on iOS, which hasn't necessarily been easy. Um, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> we've, we've talked to several, uh, app developers and it'd be mm -hmm. just through what I've done through law enforcement and realize that, you know, Apple, while it may be a more secure platform overall, uh, definitely does not allow you all to do what you need to do. So it's, uh, it's kind of. You know, that's good, the good and the bad for each. But mm -hmm. let, let me ask you, this: is there a certain type of person, a certain type of parent who you say, you know what, we'd love to help you, but we're just not going to be the best fit for you? Yeah. So I think um, by design in the product, the parent that wants to um, 
do things secretly without dialogue with the the child. Um, maybe there are certain features that you could get away with doing that, but the the product really includes the child in that process, and they've got their their own application. Um, you know, like the view feature I said that kind of gives parents an insight to the content um, that's happening on the child's device. The parent or the the child's aware of that. Um, they're activating that initially. Um, they may not be able to access certain apps that they would like to, like, right, maybe in order to access Facebook, they have to give, um, you know, permission to the parent for them to be able to, to see the content. Um, and that's part of the dialogue uh, between the parent and the child. Um, so it really helps, I think, uh, in abuse of the product, uh, you know, whether it's being used uh, um, for, you know, parent and child, obviously developing the product, like I've given uh, my wife access to use it on me if I'm, you know, uh, using my device when I when I shouldn't be. Um, mm -hmm. But we're really mindful of um, ways technology can be used in an abusive manner and try to prevent that. So um, not that parents are inherently uh, abusive, I'm not saying that, but that would maybe be a type of parent that we wouldn't be able to help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So let's jump over here to uh your website. We've got a couple of things to show. Mm -hmm. And it's ourpactpact.com. And these are the features you, you you spoke about the app rules, the allowance, mm -hmm. the family locator. I don't think you mentioned the block texting. I mentioned the web yeah. filter and view. Can you kind of just go get a rundown of what these these features are? Yeah, I'll run through each of these real quick. So schedules, you can set up uh daily schedules. So whether it's a, you know, bedtime, you want to block off when they have to be in bed and can't use um, their device and, and blocks all their apps so they get a good night's rest um, or whether they're, you know, at school and shouldn't be accessing particular apps. So you can set up a daily schedule. You can use that uh, in tandem or without the allowance, which monitors the total device use during the day. And then after they reach a certain limit, um, would block the device. Um, so the schedules kind of act as, you know, a time that they shouldn't be on the device. If you want to schedule, you know, a family date night on a recurring basis, you can set up those schedules, say, you know, every Friday night. Um, in addition to that, we have manual blocks and grants, which just allow you to on the fly, if you need to pull together a quick family meeting, you can just lock everyone's uh, devices down. Um, you know, we have some families that the, you know, parents might put this on their device. It's not necessarily something that uh, we recommend, but they're certainly welcome to do that. And they just block everyone's devices and have a family meeting. Um, app rules is really great. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. The, the first thing it does is really gives parents an insight to all the applications that their child is installing on their device. And then gives the parent uh, information to look up details about the application. So they kind of have an idea of what it is and they can either have a conversation with the child and make a decision if they want to allow the use of that uh, application or not. Um, yeah, I just touched on allowance. Uh, family locator, which you see where your children's devices are um, and set up geofence uh, alerts. Um, so if your kid you know, is of driving age, um, or even just old enough to walk to school and is walking alone with friends, it, you kind of get alerts to know uh, when they showed up. Um, so you know they got there safely if you're not constantly looking at the app to see their location. Um, block texting. So that we can do just simply through app rules, but we call it out because it's one of the number one things that um, you know parents had asked for really, really early on. And we want to make sure that we highlighted that. So you can uh, completely block down uh, texting. Um, and then with web filters, um, there's quite a bit in there. We have a really simple uh, filter you can simply turn on um, to block uh, adult content. And it's something that's difficult to keep up with. We constantly try to keep up with it. Um, View kind of helps with that, monitor the content that's being, um, that's coming through on the uh, child's device. Um, but part of that web filter and also lets you set up custom blacklist and whitelist to block websites. Um, that, you know, maybe not aren't considered adult content, but you just don't want your child to be accessing. Um, if they're young enough, you can block all browsers. They just can't access the internet altogether. Um, but you can also set up custom whitelist. Um, so there's certain uh, school websites. Some things maybe get uh, accidentally blocked for whatever reason, and you can make sure that those are always allowed. Um, so just, I just want to kind of yeah. jump in real quick. I'm sorry, just a bit so I can make sure everyone who's, who's watching explains the difference between a blacklist and a whitelist. 
uh, your whitelist says basically whitelist says they block everything up front, and you say what what uh, what websites are allowed, correct? Correct. Yeah. Compared to a blacklist where you you everything's allowed, and you just say what's not allowed as it goes. So it's kind of mm-hmm. diff- two different ways of looking at it. You can either block block everything, then only allow certain things, or allow everything and block certain things. So it's really however however parents want to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And part of that whole web filter we uh, section, we have additional filters set up, which those are uh, specific based on your child's device being either iOS or, or Android. Um, and if your child has one of each, then you have access to, to all the different settings because um, they they vary slightly between the devices. But you're able to do things like, you know, turn off profanity in Siri. Um, you can mm-hmm. turn off in-app purchases. So if you're on a, you know, uh, family account and your credit cards attached there and you're allowing them to download apps, um, you can prevent them from downloading apps too. Um, you can also, some security settings that are good to have turned on on the device that a lot of kids may not be uh uh, knowledgeable about as far as forcing um, the option to say don't track me as far as ad tracking you can turn that on for your children uh, to try to help make their device a little safer for them um, and then lastly view which is the new feature that we talked about earlier uh, just allows you to monitor the, the content visually that's actually um, you know coming through on your child's device uh, and we flag for certain keywords and alert you uh, and you can customize that alert list as well as far as um, there's words that we flag that you don't care about. You can remove them and then you can add your own custom words that we'll kind of watch and track for. So is that, is that, uh, tracking just, just words, pictures, what kind of, what does that, that track? Yeah. Or is it that's screenshots a great question. Or how does it work? We're, yeah. We're taking actual screenshots of the device. Um, and then you can change the, uh, frequency at which those screenshots occur. Um, and then we're okay. processing the image and, we take security and privacy extremely uh, serious here at our pact. Um, we use it on our own devices, um, on our own families. So it's something that has always been at the forefront of our uh, minds when we develop the product. So with the view feature specifically, um, we set up uh, obviously the public keys and obviously there's private keys. So it's really strong encryption. Um, when the screenshot's taken on the child's device, um, any OCR image recognition processing we do on a child's device and then fully encrypt it. Um, so in that way, when it's sent up um, through the server, back down to the parent's device, um, on their device, when they're authenticated in the app, they have a secret, uh, basically, right, a secret. Um, I won't go too much into the technology of the decryption yeah, process, but there, there's a secret key um, that only the, the parent account um, can then decrypt that image. Um, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, if somebody wants to find out more information about our pack, uh, what's kind of the best place for them to go? Yeah. Our Um, you can read through and get more ideas about the feature set. You can uh, look us up our pack on, uh, the Apple app store, as well as the Android play store. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to send us an email support at our uh, we'll be happy to chat with you. Excellent. Well, I, I do appreciate you spending some time with us and educating our parents on this and love to, you know, get back in touch with you a little bit down the road, kind of see where you all are and see what kind of updates y'all have. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, Mike, for your time today. And uh, we would love to continue working with you. Excellent.